Hello! Welcome to a devlog for Cursor Hero version 0.4.0. In the latest update, I've been working on UI automation stuff. So uh, given a Windows app, we want to programmatically scrape the UI information that is available. So to do that, I've uh, built something similar to inspect.exe, which uses the UI automation stuff built into Windows to grab information uh, from elements such as the bounding box, and using that bounding box, in addition with screen capturing, we can do things like uh, get the color of elements and use that to programmatically build replicas of pieces of apps. So in this case, for the calculator, uh, we care about some of the buttons. If we want to replicate the calculator, then we're probably going to skip some of the more advanced ones. But we can start with just the, uh, the numeric buttons. So clicking each one of them will add it to uh, the scratch pad here. And that captures the path taken to get to the element, which I've called the, the drill ID in this case. So if you want to programmatically rediscover this element, instead of capturing every element in the app uh, using this, you can say it's, uh, in this case, it's the eighth index from the, the root because um, that's just how it happened with all the apps I have open. But after the first element, then these are pretty consistent. So uh, taking the first element and then drilling down from there, uh, 1, 2, 1, 20, 1, we can programmatically navigate to this element. And this is important for efficiency when using the UI navigation stuff, because each of these other elements also has children that we can avoid fetching until we need them by uh, using specific paths to re-access these elements. So currently, the tool lets you click around and add these elements to the scratch pad. And then when you have the ones you care about and add them into code, in this case, I've defined uh, many of the calculator buttons and using an identifier built off of the name and the uh, class name of the element, we can uh, rediscover them. So if I wanted to get the bounds of all of these elements, then now that I've clicked them all once and added them to the code, I can hit push all and that will uh, rediscover them for usage uh, elsewhere. And I've done the same thing for the bounding box so that was the drill id and then there's the bounds of the elements so you can either do it manually or uh, push the doll so if i were to resize this window and now i want the app to reflect that then i could uh, rediscover that easily and then of course the color because we have the screen capture we can evaluate the subsection of the screen that corresponds to the bounding box and take the most common pixel value to get what the color of the element should be and using this, I've gone and started to re-implement the calculator. And I have a very primitive prototype. So you can hit numbers, add it to the expression view, and then enter another number and hit equals. But there's no actual uh, evaluation of the expression going on here. So looking at the notes I've made, so the inspector, whoops, marking elements in the scratch pad. So when you're capturing the elements and getting the bounds of them, right now it's just get, gathering it from the kind of top root level, but you can also say uh, mark an element. So I want the, the position of the number one relative to this number pad element. So I can mark this and then the scratch pad will update and give us the uh, information relative to that instead. So that's marking elements and the virtual calculator that shows the, uh, the buttons that we've programmatically kind of scraped from the, the built-in one here. So what is a, the problems with this approach so far is that there's a problem with the, the indexing. So if you have an app on top of another app, then sometimes it thinks you're hovering the app behind instead of the one in the foreground. And I don't know how to get the, uh, the Z index of applications in Windows yet. So that's one problem that I've had. And then there is the problem of element rediscovery. So right now I'm using the uh, name of the element in addition to the class name. And that could be switched to also use the drill ID. This is just how it happened naturally. But the problem is that some elements have uh, the same name. So this isn't guaranteed to be a unique identifier. And the problem with the drill ID is that when you use some apps, then the structure of them changes. So if you have the calculator and you were to switch to standard mode, then that affects the tree uh, that represents the app here. So the drill ID isn't guaranteed to be a perfect identifier either. So there's room for improvement here. 
And then the other thing is that the calculator actually has hidden state to it. So in the one that I've made, I've represented the state as uh, the expression and the value. So at the top, there's the expression and then there's the value. But the calculator, just from these two elements, you can't get a perfect uh, tell of what it should be doing. So if I were to say 2 plus 2, all right, let's come on. equals and then it shows four so if you were to hit the four button or like the five button then that's not going to change to 45 because it's showing a preview it's not in like append mode so if i hit five then it clobbers it and overwrites it with five but if i were to uh do four equals or whatever and then four i hit the four button and it's still showing four so now it's in append mode so if i were to hit five now now it shows 45 so there's complications in trying to mirror the behavior of this because you can't tell what the state transition should be from just the visual uh, state. And then of course my calculator doesn't actually evaluate yet and I haven't added a lot of the buttons that are in the scientific mode. So the, the next steps that I've been thinking of is more automatic scraping. So right now the color detection that I'm doing is just taking the uh, most common pixel value when uh, by navigating the mouse programmatically, I can get a hovered state and an unhovered un state, and then that would give me uh, information to improve mine so that when you hover the, the virtual one, it does the same kind of hover effect as well. And I could, of course, just actually capture the pixels and then display a texture on the buttons in the virtual calculator instead of uh, re-rendering the text. And... The element scraping, there is some uh, AI stuff, so segmenting models can give you detailed uh, guesses at what's on the screen, which is not quite as accurate as the UI tree, so a combination of approaches would be uh, good for this, this kind of initial discovery process. If you wanted to automatically create virtual clones of apps other than the calculator, then you could uh, get the significant elements like I want all these buttons or whatever, but there's some like hidden things like spacing or whatever that you might not care about once you have uh, the bounds of the stuff that you do want. So there's there's a lot of kind of noise in the tree that you might not care about. And then for doing the evaluation function, instead of just like implementing a entire calculator logic with parity, like the calculator source for Windows is it's open source. You can find it on GitHub, but instead of investing in trying to recreate the uh, behavior of the app entirely is uh, the instead, so if I were to force this on top, and then in the game, if I middle click on this, it should, oh, with, with this thing open, come on, then it will uh, programmatically move the mouse and click on it, at least it should. It gets confusing when you have the video of the app itself. So it's not leaving pause mode. There. So when I middle click, I've made it so that it will uh, call the click method on the UI element, which in this case, the crate is animating the mouse between the two positions and then clicking. So this could be uh, sped up to remove the animation and just do it very quickly so that when you click the buttons in the virtual calculator, it will uh, track the state so that when you say one, two, three, plus one, two, three, and then when you hit equals, instead of running the logic here, it will outsource the logic to go to this calculator and then replay the inputs and then read the output that way. So that is one pathway for proceeding. And then the other thing is that this could build a model of the, the transitions so that we have this kind of source of truth that you usually don't get when you're trying to do prediction tasks. And if we were to just programmatically randomly click all these buttons and then uh, between each set, we can hit the clear button and we can get a huge amount of samples for uh, what this calculator should be doing through just walking randomly here. And then the other thing is uh, pathfinding. So if you have a target number, so if we say a million, then you can get there by hitting one zero 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 zero, and then if you do plus one equals, 
then this state is uh, achievable in a certain amount of clicks, but you can also get there quicker. So if you do uh, 6 and then 10 to the 6 equals plus, uh, oh wait, no, it's six there and then you have to hit equals plus one equals so if you don't do the the equals then it won't show one million it'll show 10 to the six here so if we say six there plus one then see it's it's different so there's some kind of pathfinding challenges that could be done to say what's the shortest amount of steps to get from an arbitrary state to a given state where the expression is showing something and the value is showing something and then that also would have to accommodate the append mode or whatever. So it's showing this number. And if I were to hit one, then it kind of resets everything. Whereas sometimes um, it is still appending digits. So that's the uh, the progress I've made. I think the significant portion of this is just the uh, what I've done to replicate the uh, UI inspect.exe kind of stuff where you can see the bounds of the elements and then get the texture of the, the stuff at that location and then that is very helpful for creating uh starting to create realistic virtual applications so that we can have a sandboxed environment for our agent to uh, walk around and try and explore <laughs>